So what we're going to do now is mark our cross jet and flap. So to start off with, we're going to come quarter past the end of our slit in our dominant wedge and mark a line. We're going, going to draw a line through our dominant wedge and extend it into the side body. And we're going to draw a pocket which is six inches wide. Sorry, five and a quarter inches wide. Six inches wide is the wider end of the pocket. Five and a quarter is the narrowest sort of end of where your pocket should be. Now, the width of this pocket is dependent on the size of the coat. If you've got someone who's got a 34 inch chest, it would be five and a quarter, and you would grade it approximately in sixteenths. So as you get into the 44, 46 inch chest, that's where your pocket starts to be come closer to six inches wide. Now we're going to draw our flap in place. To do that, we're going to draw a line coming down from our pocket opening and it's going to come perpendicular in the square and squaring that down. Doing the same on this side. Let's go that down. But then we're going to draw the flap, and I want a flap which is two and an eighth of an inch wide. So, and up here to an eighth of an inch. Draw that in place. I'm then going to kick the end of the flap out by a quarter of an inch. And I'm going to mark this chalk to be transferred onto the bit of cloth that we'll be using for the flap itself. Let's do the same for the upper swelt, marking in strong chalk all the way around it. And then using that chalk to transfer the marks across. Grab some scrap fabric. ensuring that you are going along the right grain. I'm quickly going to press this. Take your fabric on the right side. Line up the grain of the fabric with the grain of your coat. Leave yourself an excess of a good couple inches all the way around where you're placing your top cloth, as you can see here. So I've got an inch a good inch at the top, a good inch around the sides. I'm making sure that the grain is correct. And I'm now going to bang those marks through. I can now see on the other side that those marks have been transferred. I delicately place this on the board and cut with an excess around it. I now need to do the same for my atlas welt, placing my flat delicately over there. Grab length of cloth, making sure that the grain is correct, leaving an excess all the way around it. And again, banging those chalk marks in. I then have my transferred outgress welt in place, and again, trim around. Now, my jets 
will be taken on the straighter grain. So this, I've lost my arrow here, I'll place it back in. Here's the grain going down. I'm going to get my jets coming across like so. So these will be my jets. I'll write that down there so I don't get confused. And I now have all my elements in place to be able to start prepping for my pockets. So these are all of the elements that you will need for your cross jetted flap. I need the fabric for my flap with my flap um, chalked on it, some lining to back the flap and to um, uh, create a facing within the pocket, some fusible to back the flap, some top cloth for my jets, some linen holland or silicia or other non-flexible um, woven thin cloth to back the jets in to stop them from stretching and some silicia for my pocket bag. So the first thing we make is the flap. The reason why we make up the flap before making, out, making up the jets is so that we establish the very precise and exact length of the flap so that the jets sit exactly either end of that flap. If there is a discrepancy between both lengths, then the flap will either be filled into the jets and unsightly, or there will be slight gaps between where the flap ends and where the jets begin. To start off with, we're going to remark our chalk marks within our fabric, and we're going to cut a strip of fusible which sits just inside of these marks. The way we do that is to transfer all of these markings across. So this is quite light on the other side, so what I'm going to do is mark to the right side my chalk here. There. And there. Those are now all transferred over and make sure that they are nice and sharp lines. And I then place that on my fusible in an economical manner and bang those marks through. I then get the outline, which I cut out. If your chalk marks are struggling to bang through, your other option is to place your ruler over the fusible and to sandwich your chalk between the cloth and the fusible. We then cut this strip out. Lay it into our flat. And we want to make sure that the inside edges of the fusible, sorry, the, fray, the, the raw edges of the fusible sit on the inside edge of our chalk mark. Now to do this, we need to make our fusible slightly shorter than our flap. And so I'm just gonna cut off a bare eighth of the end here on one side to allow that to all sit in nice and snugly. Like so. I'm making a square shaped flap here because it's a slightly more technical thing to do and I want you to practice corners. But traditionally on a single breasted coat, you would have a rounded flap. Now, that's just a design feature. Many tailors don't abide by this, rules, the, this rule, sorry. But um, for technical dexterity, I want you to be able to make sharp, crisp corners. And I'm gonna show you that technique and having two corners in here will allow you to better understand how to do that. Showing round a rounded corner is fairly simple. 
it's a question of trimming back and then easing the corner out um, quite um, dexterously to make sure that the lining sits behind. It's an easy process. This is a bit more technical and will be an exercise in um, hand-eye coordination. I'm just going to even off the fusible at the top and press that in place. So first things first is lay your flap on a sleeve board so that you've got some height to it and start with the cloth side. Bring the cloth side back and press it flat, pulling it all the way against where you stitched it. Make sure that you're not leaving a lip inside between where you're pressing it and where the stitch line is. making sure that you're drying things out if you're using steam. And move to the next section, making sure that that corner again is pulled all the way out. corner. As you're folding it, make sure that the cloth that sits beneath it is also laying flat. That is a seam allowance that sits beneath it. and then proceed with the other side. Starting on the other end, fold the lining back all the way in. 
making sure that there is no lip between where you're pressing and where you've stitched. Coming into the corners, really tease them back, ensuring that they're flat. Now starting with the other end, we're creating alternating folds on the corners, which help reduce the amount of bulk in them. Again, this can be a little bit tricky, and your fingers can get a little bit hot. So if you blow as you go along, you can create a little bit of coolness to make that pressing process a bit more tolerable. Now that that's nice and flat, reassess your work, make sure that it's right. If it isn't, go back over it. These are really important bits to take your time on. There we go. Now, we come to snipping the seam allowances. Put your shears in the corner at 45 degrees and snip to the corner. Same on this side and on the other corner. This will even out all the inlays, ensuring that things don't sit on top of one another. And you're now ready to bag out. So position the foot of the machine a sixteenth in from where you intend to stitch it. Pop your needle in and back tack into that first line. Come forwards, come back again to reinforce that stitch and then begin sewing down your line. Now you're sewing just inside of the line. What you want to make sure as well is that you're pulling the cloth that sits beneath, that is to say, your jacket top cloth tight. Again, you don't want your jets to become tight. You want your jacket top cloth to be, sit nice and flush. Take your time in stitching this. Be very, very precise with your foot's placement is absolutely critical. Once you get to the end, slowly come in, control the length of your last stitch with your back foot, and do the same thing, back, forwards, and then back a few more stitches, and then repeat that process on the other side. So, in the same direction. Again, coming in slightly from where I'm going to mitre, dropping my foot down, coming back, a couple of stitches, making sure that I'm hitting the line exactly, forwards, back, and now I can start stitching. Right. 
control in my last stitch length. Back tacking, and then forwards again, and then a few more back tacks. And that's it. Your next step is to release your base. Both on the top and the bottom. Make sure you snip all your threads as well. And assess your work, making sure that you've got exactly two nice and neat parallel lines. If they're waving, redo them. If they're not sitting equidistant from that middle line, again, redo them. This is your last opportunity to make sure that your work is correct, otherwise your jets will look squid. You can now trim your top jets an inch back. But leave all of the excess either side of the top and bottom. We're now going to split straight down the middle the top, delicately opening that up. And then we're going to split the bottom sections separately. So I only cut the top jets, split those all the way through, and then going to pinch my coat and lay it in line with itself, like so. Once it's in line, I'm going to take my shears and snip an opening. Place my shears in the opening and stop cutting about three eighths of an inch in from the end lines. I'm now going to mitre. I'm going to lift the edges of my jet cloth up and I'm going to snip into the last stitch that I've made. Now that I've done this, I'm going to press the fabric seams open on my jets and I'm going to pull my mitres out of the way to make sure that they're delicately displaced and we won't start fraying. First things first, I'm going to grab my mitres and move them out of the way. And delicately lift them up. Pull them back. Press them into place. Same thing on the other ones. Delicately pulling them back.
I then take my first jet and flip it through very delicately. These points are very, very delicate, so you really want to handle this neatly. Place your coat on the edge of the sleeve board. And then neatly curl the top of your jet back so that it's in line with where you're going to press the fabric seams open where you've sewn. Now by fabric seam, I mean the seam that you're pressing open needs to have fabric either end of it. If it's got canvas and silicia or linen holland either end of it, you're pressing the wrong layers open. You need to see fabric on top of fabric. Make sure that you press that nice and firmly, especially over the seams, which can create a vast amount of pulp. And keep assessing your work. At this point, you can begin to remove those bastes that were securing your Donlin wedge shut. Now that that's firmly pressed over, flip it, make sure you've done that correctly. Lay everything nice and flat beneath and give it a press on the other side. And then repeat the process the other jet by first reflipping the first jet through, laying it flat, and pulling the second one out. Again, being very delicate, make sure everything that sits beneath it is laying nice and flat before proceeding with pressing the top. Same process, flip the edge of your jet and begin pressing it and then press open your fabric seams. Be a little bit tricky, just take your time. And flip this over, give it a press on the other side to make sure that that's all sitting nice and flat. And you can now start rolling your jets. To roll the jets, I'm going to take some thread that is the same color as my top cloth. And instead of basting it, I'm going to go straight to stitching the jet down and curl it at the same time. This is a hand technique that saves you a little bit of time and also allows for a little bit more dexterity, makes the whole process a touch easier, I find. 
So the first thing you do is you've got one jet inside, one jet outside, as you've just pressed it. Fold the first jet in and begin by rolling it. Now you want to make sure that that jet is exactly half the width of the pocket that you've just sewn. Prep the end in nicely by curling it back and then delicately begin to form its shape. Form a knot in your needle and begin by stitching. Initially right on the edge of your pocket mouth, coming up in the ditch that you've sewn. Careful not to come out of the mitre, or you might start fraying that point. And then roll your jet back all the way along, maintaining the same width and back stitching in that ditch. Again, I'm curling it back to the width that I want. And as I'm going along, just back stitching it in place. So this is a part that you really need to take your time in making sure that you're pressing firmly flat on the roll so that you're getting a good impression of how it's going to look once it's pressed flat. Like that, the full length of that jet is exactly the same width. Just prepping the end of my jet. And as I come into the end, sure that I'm hitting exactly half the width of the pocket mouth opening. Once I come to the end, I put my final stitch in. Again, don't come too close to the edge of your mitre. Put your final stitch in. Bring it back up and then back tack very delicately a couple of times. Form a tight 
tiny little knot. And repeat that process with the top jet. Once those are rolled, you then press everything nice and flat. Like so. And then we're going to come in and stitch our mitres down. Again, we're going to do this by hand. You can do this by machine, although it takes not much more time to do it by hand and will allow you a little bit more control. As you get more comfortable with the machine, you can begin doing it but to get really, really nice, crisp mitres. We're going to do this by hand. So we're going to pull. We're going to lay everything flat, like so. We're going to pull the jacket back. We're going to pull the silesia back. And we're then going to reveal the mitre. We're going to pull our jets in, nice and firmly, like so. We're going to lay our mitre flat, pull it out, and then we're going to backstitch all along its length in that fold that we've created. Again, this back stitch needs to overlap itself to make sure that you're gathering enough stitches in that small section to keep it nice and flush. Make sure as you're stitching that both your jets are sitting not on top of one another, but either side nice and neatly. As you're going along, you can reassess your work to make sure that the results are those that you wanted. You go back in, have a look. That's looking pretty good. I'm quite happy with that. So I'm going to tack off. And finish that stitch. And repeat the process for the other side. So now that you've prepped your uh, jets, we're going to integrate the flap, simply place it in, and if you've done your job right, it should sit perfectly snug. Lay it into the line of the top jet, and place it in place. Now we're going to baste inside the line of our top jet.
and we're going to little. We're going to do small bases all along the flap to keep it secured down while we stitch it down across the top. Sure that your flap is positioned well in place and then we can proceed to prepping the pocket bag. So for our pocket bag we need some top cloth for the facing of the bag so that as we put our hand into the bag we're seeing top cloth and not silicia and we need our strip of silicia for our bag itself. Now we're going to grab the top of our length of silicia. The length of silicia needs to be about doubled over that length. There's no hard and fast rule here. It's an approximation. So you need to be able to insert your hand in plus three inches. And then the layer top cloth needs to be about this length. Again, there are no hard and fast rules here but an approximation would be about six inches or five inches from the top of the bag. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna start off by trimming off the top of the bag nice and neatly. So we're keeping everything pristine. We're then gonna mark a line that sits five inches below that. grab a strip of fabric that is that length plus a seam making sure that you're considering the arrows as well on the top cloth remember if you're cutting off an arrow pop it back in to the section that you won't be using I want my top cloth to be facing this way at the top of the pocket bag, so I flip it below it, trace my line to where I want that sewn, like so, lay my strip of fabric in, and sew that into place a seam down. Press it and flip it over. I've now got my facing attached to my pocket bag and I pressed this seam over. I'm going to top stitch this seam as well to make sure that it stays nice and flush. And then I'm going to also go to the machine, stitch my flap in place and remove these securing bases. The way I stitch my flap in place is to come beneath the coat here and stitch a quarter of an inch pass this line all the way across on top of the silicia, securing silicia, flap, top cloth, all in one go. So now that you've got your pocket bag in place, again, we're staying clean all throughout. Just trim this edge off. By the way, your bag, I forgot to add this, is cut a good few inches wider than your pocket now. So you've got an excess either side. Again, we're constantly cutting things wider than we need and trimming back and staggering so that we have that ability to make sure that there is no bulk in any sections of the coat. Lay your facing flat, then grab your coat, 
lay your coat in place like so and start to consider how you're going to stagger your pocket. So we want all the elements here to come at different heights. We also want a fair excess around the top and around the sides of the pocket to make sure that we can secure it down to the canvas at a later date. Just going to trim these threads. So what we're going to do is begin by staggering the top cloth for our jets. And we're going to stagger that about a quarter of an inch past our solution, which will just trim back ever so slightly. Again, clean, nice, crisp lines all throughout our work. going to pop a ruler behind here so I don't cut the flap. I'm going to trim that a half inch past the solution. Like so. I'm then going to trim my flap to a quarter of an inch past the solution and a quarter of an inch before my jet top cloth so that everything's laying in quarter of an inch intervals. And then the top cloth for my bag, I'm going to lay it in a quarter of an inch past where I lay the top cloth for my jet. Like that, everything arrives in different sections. I'm going to then paste or pin this down. So, now that that's in place, I'm going to start forming my pocket bag. So I need to consider the direction that the bag is going to take. So laying everything nice and flush, I can start now to consider how I'm going to layer my bottom jet. Again, I'm going to trim this back. That's a silicia within my jet to about a three quarters of an inch past where it's sewn in. And then I'm going to leave a good half inch past that on my bottom jet. That leaves me with a fair amount of access so that my silicia is not visible from the entry point of my pocket. And then I'm going to grab my bag and insert that against that, stick, that cut that I just made against the bottom jet. Flip that over and baste that in place. I'm now going to go to my machine and stitch along this line, a seam in from my raw edge, and along the top of my pocket, and I'm going to stitch that in the same line in which I stitched my flap. 
Once I've done that, I'm going to go to the iron and I'm going to press all of these seams open. And I'm then going to press my bag nice and flush and I'm going to begin drawing its shape. I'm then also going to place a little pleat in the bag to make sure that there's a little bit of a suspension within it so that the load that's bearing within the coat is not enacting entirely on the top cloth but there is a little bit of excess length within the bag that gives ever so slightly every time you put something in it or you put your hand in. So I've currently got the pocket bag laying flush. I'm going to flip it over and pull my coat down and remove all these bases. Now these bases can stay in place because this cloth is black and has a tight weave, but in the event that you have a cloth which is lighter or you have a cloth which has an open weave, leaving some white threads in there can be visible from the exterior. So it's a good thing just to remove them. Good habit to get into. Same thing, I'm going to remove these bases. Trim my threads back. Now, I'm going to position my coat flat, like so, making sure that the pocket bag is nice and flush over here. I'm then going to lay it over. I'm going to grab this side of the bag and I'm going to pull it down, keeping a hand here firmly in place. And I'm going to tease all of that cloth down. I'm then going to leave the coat up like so. And I'm going to press a crease in here. Make sure you're acting with the iron's weight to press that seam completely flat and over. We're not opening it, we're leaving it flush. I then pull my iron all the way down to the bottom of my bag, making sure that everything is lying nice and flat. I then lay my coat back down, again ensuring that it's flat and that everything beneath it is sitting flush and I pop my hand in the pocket. I can now see approximately the shape of my bag. My hand goes only until there. It goes in line with the pocket over here and you can see the kick of my small finger over there which I'm going to mimic over there. Now that we've got those three points in place we're going to lift the side of the coat up and I'm going to line up the edge of my pocket. So I'm going to go a quarter of an inch past my mitre and I can extend past this line that I made. Like so. And then I'm going to go an inch further down than I intend to. And we'll see why in a second. And then I'm going to go and fold the coat on the other edge, again a quarter of an inch past my mitre and approximately in line with that last mark. Now it doesn't need to be, this isn't an exact science, these are approximations, they needn't be precise, like so. Now that I've done that, I feel to where the edge of my bottom um, jet is going to be, and I create a pleat inside, high up in the bag, and I create a pleat which is about a half inch on the double, so an inch wide. That's the extra inch that we've got in there. And I make sure that it doesn't go any further up than the crease that I can feel in 
my bottom jet over there. I line everything up nice and smoothly and repress that in place. I then grab two pens Place those either side of the intersections between my chalk lines and those pleats, and I sew all the way around my bag. Okay. So what I'm going to do is while I'm stitching the bag, to, avoid, to prevent any lint from accumulating in the corners, I'm going to round these off nicely so that no fluff lies in them. Now that your pocket bag is sewn, we're going to trim around it. So we're going to leave a good half inch all the way around your bag. Again, make sure that you're sewing nice and neatly. Sewing, sorry, cutting. Do not cut your coat. Remove from the way of your blades. Now at the front, before you trim that, make sure that you've got enough excess past your stitch lines to tack your bag down to your canvas. If I leave a half inch, I still have plenty of excess over there, that's fine. Curl my coat back and again cut a good half inch. my stitch line. I'm trying nice and tidy all the way. Now, one last step, two last steps rather, I'm going to stagger the edge of my pocket. So I've got my silicia here, which I'm going to pull back by a quarter of an inch. And then I'm going to come into my jets and I'm going to trim them out. I'm going to layer them by just snipping their top ends. Like so. Same on the other side. out and then layer my jets. Like so. And then you've got thin ends either sides of your pocket. Last step is to finally rebase down your flap so that it doesn't interfere as you're producing your coat.
it's uh, finally we're going to pull the coat round and secure our pocket bag to our canvas. The way we do this is to ensure that there are little, tiny little bubbles of fullness all the way along. Again, this is the process of relative length that we're never forgetting. We're going to start at the top here and we're going to pull ever so slightly further down. and go all the way through. Again, these are bare amounts, they're just to make sure that there's no tightness within the coat. And then as the pocket bag is coming around, we're going to include little bubbles of fullness, tiny little bubbles, hardly perceptible, to make sure that the pocket bag is not interfering with the coat. Pull the canvas down. Stitch in place. Once that's in place, we we'll check this by pulling the coat up and making sure that there are no interferences, which there aren't. I can see it hanging here, and the forepart is hanging nice and straight, in which case our job is done right, and we're going to pad this into place permanently by just catching the pocket bag and the canvas, and then releasing these construction stitches. So we're going to start at the top, come in place, and I'm just catching the top of the pocket bag and the canvas all the way around. I'm not catching the top cloth. And I'm going to do light pads, which sit about three quarters of an inch apart. And I'm going to double these over just to really secure things in place. Down. my needle is being flicked out of the top cloth and not catching it, just catching the pocket bag and the canvas.
release construction stitch. pad in between my initial stitches to further secure this. Very final step is to detach. Our detacks are what secure the mitres in place. They're a little black stitch, sorry, black stitch. They're a little stitch that's the same colour as your top cloth. And the way you do it is by producing a stab stitch which forms a little crescent all the way around the edges of your jets. Start by making a nice knot and then draw the part of your crescent with the edge of your chalk. Just a little half circle. and stab stitch that in place. You want your stitches to be about 
uh, an eighth of an inch apart. Don't pull too hard or you'll create strong marks in the cloth. This is a delicate little stitch just to secure the edges of the pocket. Now this is placing load on the section of the top cloth that is less fragile than your mitre points and will ensure longevity for your piece. The reason why this bit of finishing is done now and not later is because at a later date your coat will be lined and you won't be able to afford to do this with as much ease. In and out style stitching all the way along. Once you've done one end, pack it in place with a couple of back stitches. the other side. And that will be your pocket done. So we're now moving on to the outrest belt and what we're going to need is the top cloth marked with our outrest belt. We're going to need uh, a little bit of cloth for our um, the top side of our outrest, you'll see this, it'll form the facing, and we're going to need some silicia to form the pocket bag, as well as some fusible to um, interface the outrest valve itself. The first step is much the same as on the cross jet and flap, and that is to build the welt first. So we remark our lines with a sharp chalk. Sharpen that. Remark the lines where you want. Like so. And mark them across to the other side. Transfer the markings as well onto your fusible. Make sure that your fusible has a little bit of excess along the top and then a good couple inches of excess along the bottom. Transfer those marks in. So, then what we're going to do is we're going to cut our fusible a half inch bigger than our weld itself. We 
we're then going to sticky this on, matching our lines up, like so. Once that's firmly fused in place, I'm going to turn the jet over, the welt over, and we're going to leave about three quarters of an inch at the sides, like so, and we're going to leave a good inch at the top. We're then going to cut it down, leaving a quarter of an inch at the bottom. This, you'll see that everything is already staggered and we're going to go to the iron and we're going to press these corners in and we're going to do the top first and then bring the sides. Once we've done that we're going to fell them round making sure that they are very lightly being kept in place and we're just going to fell them to the fusible and then we're going to begin forming um, the mitered ends which will be sewn into place to secure the welt into the coat. So starting with the top of the welt, begin by pressing this in place. Be very very delicate with how you press, making sure that your lines are dead straight. <laughs> Pressing the sides in, first side in, like so. Again, making sure that you get nice and sharp corners. side again, ensuring you're being precise with how you manipulate the cloth. This corner we have two options we can either snip it to a scant or we can press it in to a point like so fold it in and then fold it over Now that we've got this firmly in place, we're going to come and trim some of the excesses away. Thing with the corner, snipping into it, and trimming a quarter along this edge. The same along this side. And then slowly forming a point 
until the end. Then layer this edge half inch away and then an eighth further in from its end. And this edge can get trimmed back again as well a half inch. Make sure that that end is nice and crisp and you're getting a nice sharp point. And there you have your welt formed. So the next step is to very quickly pad this down just with a top cloth, making sure that you're just maintaining things in place and you're not coming through to the right side of the fabric. Again, these stitches needn't be They're just to keep things in place while we're sewing. They get left in. But this will all be covered in any case at a later date by your edge stitching on either edge of the welt. and then by the silicia that will sit on top of the inside of it. Now that you've stitched down the edges of your welt with that light pad either side, we're then going to secure it down to the coat. The way we do this is by marking where our lines, um, the middle line, like on our, our cross and flat, is going to go. So we initially lay the atlas welt into where it will be sewn in place, like so, and mark the quarter inch edge inside of it. We then begin to form our mitres, which will look like this and like this. So we're going to be stitching on this outer edge and on this inner edge. On the inner edge, we're going to be stitching down our pocket facing, which will come like so and flip down into the coat. And then on this edge, we'll be stitching in 
our outrest weld, which will flip up and form our weld. Our first step is to mark where these lines are on the inside of the coat. So with pins, click this through to show where our outrest is getting sewn in. And mark this with some graphite, or you can do it with pencil. Like so. We then grab a ruler, chalk this line through. And what we're going to do is cut an inch access all the way round. So coming out here and out here and below. Starting from an inch above. There and there. And what we're going to cut is a window that looks like this. An inch on this case is a little bit too far in to the side. We're going to come in just a slight more. I'm going to do three quarters rather than an inch. Like so. I'm going to cut along these lines. Before I do that, I made a mistake earlier on in the coat, which is that I used a pattern which had no outrest well marked, which meant that while I was canvassing, I forgot to allow for the outrest weld. So we're just going to make that correction very quickly. As you can see, there are two canvas and stitches that come past our outrest weld. We're very quickly going to put a little snip in there, a little snip in there, and tie these back. Typically what you would do is tack either end of this so that you wouldn't have to redo this. As you can now see, that's tacked into place either side of the outbrace welt, and we can begin cutting open our canvas. So be very careful here when doing this. You do not want to cut your top cloth. In order to do that, you delicately create an opening for your shears. I like to use an unpicker. And I can lift the cloth out of the way. through my canvas here. I'm just going to go back in with the unpicker.
like so. We've now created our window, which will allow us to get into our coat. So, now that we have that in place, we can begin to baste our welt in and stitch it down. We'll then lay our piece for the facing and stitch that down afterwards. So, come back here, pin this out of the way. position your welt, making sure that you've marked its ends precisely. Transferring those marks onto the other side. And then going to grab my facing, which looks like that. And I'm going to trim that back to the size that I need. So I only want it to be approximately this one. And I want it to extend about an inch past the size of my welt. I then lay that in and that will get stitched in place as well in the same way. And I can pad this in as well. So you can see that things are overlapping ever so slightly. It's exactly the same principle as the jets. Except that on one side we have a facing and the other side we have a weld. The last thing we need to do is to remark where our mitres are going. So if you lift this cloth up, you can see we've marked it back here. And back here. So 
So I'm going to retrace this separately so that you can see more accurately. Make it a bit bigger. But if you can imagine that that is the welt that I drew, like so, we're going to be making mitres that sit at an angle into the pocket. So the blue lines are going to be our cut lines for the mitre. Whereas on the cross jet and flat, the mitres were laid at the same points. Here, they're displaced inwards so that the facing doesn't come in and disturb the clean look of the abreast welt. Right, so our next step is to go to the machine, stitch down the welt, stitch down the facing to the lines that we marked, split those open, and then proceed, just like the other pockets, in creating our pocket bag. So I begin by coming in about three eighths from the end and stitching back into the corner of that welt, making sure I just get the corner. I back tack right to the edge, making sure that, that point's nice and secure, and then I can come forwards. Again, make sure everything's laying flat and your canvas is nicely out of the way. same thing make sure you get right into the edge controlling your last stitch and back tack come back forwards come back again and then back stitch the next step is to stitch the pocket facing down same principle except this time we come into this end here and start at our new mitre points, backstitch into them, again doing that extra stitch and then coming forwards, continue down. Stop at your mark, secure that down. Now going to we're now going to trim some threads, take out our base, to cut our mitres. So like on the cross jet and flap, we split down the middle of our jets. Well, our split's already been made down the middle since our two pieces are separate already. So all we need to do is cut into the mitre points. To do, the, to do this, it's exactly the same principle as on our coat. We find the central line snip into it and stop three eighths of an inch before our end points. So I'm just going to mark 
that in place there. And then come in with my shears where I placed that initial cut and I cut down to my 3 8 mark and then cut into the corner that I've just made. and into the corner of the atlas well. Make sure you don't go too far. Same thing on the other side. Stopping 3 8 short. And cutting into my corner. Next thing we do, just like on the jets, is to um, press open our fabric seams. So first things first, just like on the other pocket, this place your mitre is out of the way. And then flip your facing in. Press that open. Like so. Make sure that it's sitting nice and flat on the other side. And then press your welt in as well. Pushing your facing back in. Laying it flat. And pressing your fabric seams. And flip everything over, pushing your facing in, pulling your outbus welt out very delicately, and make sure that everything is sitting nice and flush. Once everything's positioned in place, and everything beneath is nice and flat. Give the top cloth a press. <laughs> now you see your breast, your abreast welt taking shape. The next step is to insert the pocket bag. So to insert the pocket bag, we need a layer of solution. And we want the outbreast welt to be deep enough just to put the handkerchief in. So about the width of the length of my fingers, no more than that. So what we do is we double over 
a piece of cloth that is a couple of inches longer than the length of my fingers, like so. There, and cut this off. And then I begin to position this within the pocket. So, first things first, I take my bag and position my pocket bag along those lines and mark through the angle at which it must sit, making sure that the orientation of my bag is going down my coat, as you can see, like so, and mark this line across, marking the ends as well. And I'm going to cut on this angle. Making sure that my ends are marked here as well. I then match up this end to here. Matching up my ends. And sew that on a seam in. Pin that in place very quickly. Once that's sewn in place, I press that seam over nice and flat and can start forming the pocket bag into the top of the welt. I've now inserted my pocket bag to the facing. I then want to flip it up and work out how much length I need to trim away for it to insert into my outbreast welt. So I here have the width of my outbreast welt marked in place over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim this bag. So I'm going to leave an excess past the opening of my welt of about a couple of inches. And I'm going to trim that to the width that I've cut my mitre. And mark that mitre across, making sure that the bag is big enough to fit my fingers in. And I trim this up like so. so that is going to form the opening to my mitre. And then I splay this out to make sure that I've got enough excess to cover my welt. Then do the same thing, splaying things out as they come out of my mitre. And we trim all of this away at a later date. I then insert that triangle, that trapeze, in through the pocket mouth. So, and flip the bag the other way. It's then peeking through the pocket. And I can then mark the shape of my outbreast against it and know exactly where to trim it back to. I then mark where the top of my wealth is going to be, come down from that point a quarter of an inch and trim back. I 
trim my sides as well, which I've marked. Fold the top of that lip back a quarter of an inch. You can press it down with your fingers. And I secure that down a quarter of an inch, sorry, a half inch down from the top of my bag. You can go straight to a fell stitch here. So you don't need to worry about the raw edges of the silicia on either end of the outbreast because those are going to get secured in place by the stab stitches that are keeping the welt against the coat. So very, very quickly, just going to fill this down into place. Again, you're not catching the top side of this welt. Simply catching the cloth that you can see on the wrong side. And just tack that off. Now that the bag is secured in place, we're going to go to the iron and we're going to lay our outrest welt flat and press a crease into the bottom of the bag, pulling all of the elements down so that we can then chalk the shape of the bag. Flat like this, and your outrest welt in place, you're going to pull the bag up, so pull the coat up, pull the bag down, and press in a crease. We're then going to come to this side of the welt, and from the edge of the welt, draw a line going down the coat. Now it can be a bit confusing which direction it needs to go in, but if you imagine your fingers in place there, that's got to be the bottom of the bag. These are the edges of my fingers here and here. So I'm just going to draw that in place. And again, curling the corners to make sure that there's no lint accumulating in the bag. Now, making sure all my seam 
bounce is orientated in the right direction. Very nice and flat. And trim away all of my threads. Neatening everything up. And I trim a good half inch all the way around my pocket bag. Next step is to release the canvas and to flip that back down. We're then going to re-secure it into place. Grabbing a sleeve board. shape out of the way and ensuring that everything's laying nice and flush. send a line down our canvas to secure it in place. Now secured, we're going to begin by securing our welt. Make sure that your bag is sitting nice and flush.
position the inlay seam allowance here of your welt which was sticking out within the mitre and tack that into place. You have your base down your welt using your thread marks as your guides for where that welt needs to be positioned. sure everything's sitting nice and flush. And then press this all into place. Once that's all in place, we're going to re-secure our canvas on the inside. To do this, we're going to pad stitch the edges of our canvas back together, ensuring that we do not catch our top cloth. the same on the other side. you want to make sure you don't do, secure it against the bag, which will otherwise render it useless and inaccessible. We then secure the bag to the canvases in the same way that we did for the other pocket. This time round, because this pocket isn't particularly load bearing, you don't need to go quite so crazy with the stitches, and you can simply add it to the surface of the canvas. Again, little bubbles of fullness all the way around to ensure that it isn't interrupting the look of the coat.
Our next stage is to apply the finishing stitches, which will secure the welt in place. To do that, we're going to stab stitch two rows on the outer edge and one row on the inner edge um, to secure the welt down. Start off by forming a knot and picking a colour of the cloth, colour thread, which is the same colour as your cloth, and simply come up. right in the corner of where your welt begins and lightly stab stitch down the sides. You don't want to be pulling this tight or you'll be drawing the cloth into the welt. You just want to be delicately securing the edge in place. As you come into the top, come a good quarter of an inch inside and continue doing another row all the way down. This row will also affix the silicia from your pocket bag to the sides of your welt. Once you've done that, come back and tack on. I'll show you those rows here, so you can see one row on the outside very delicately tacking down the edge and then one row a quarter of an inch in from the edge. Again a stab stitch, tiny little stab stitch, don't pull tight. And do exactly the same thing on this edge.
come to the end, again, take off. Now remove the base that no longer need to be in place and your pocket's done.